Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. We are going to be creating a really cool looking Pro Mist filter effect using motion so we can apply it as a plugin. And this is actually based off my friend Dylan John's tutorial, his halation effect tutorial. So we're gonna be creating that same effect just in motion as a plugin. So from the motion project browser, we are just going to select the final cut effect and leave the settings as they are. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually bring in a clip to work with so we can see how this effect is being applied. So let's go ahead and push command I. And once we've found the clip that we wanna work with, we'll just push import. Now that we have that clip, go ahead and select it, go up to the inspector, find the image area here, and the drop zone, we'll set that to the effect source. We can delete the uh, other drop zone that it creates. Once we've done that, go ahead and right click your clip, go down to make clone layer, select our clone layer, go up to filters, and we are going to add a luma key here so we can just select the bright areas of our image. Under view, we are gonna set that to the matte view and you'll see how it turns it black and white. So anything that is black will be deleted. Anything that is white will remain in the image. So we can just drag up this black area until we've got a nice silhouette over our image. And this is looking pretty good to me. Now we can just set the view back to the composite view. After that, we're gonna add another filter, go up to filters, blur, and we're gonna set it to Gaussian blur. Now drag this blur up and you'll notice how the edges, wherever it is bright, is actually got this nice blooming effect. And I like to set this around 200 for this particular effect, but it's very easy to overdo it. So, you know, you might have a visual difference in mind and think this is too much. You can set it accordingly. After that, we're going to jump into the properties of our clone layer and we're going to set the blend mode to screen and this is just gonna give it a little bit more brightness in the areas where it is overlapping the original footage. Then we can drag our opacity down. I like to set it to like something like 40 and you can dial it in exactly how you want it. But I feel like 40 is a good number and it's just real subtle but it is there. So if I disable it and enable it you can see the difference. The last thing we're gonna do is add the ability to colorize this glow. So if we jump up to filters, go down to color, and we're going to set this to colorize, we can set the color to whatever we want. So later on, if you wanna really stylize your shot, you could have this like kind of green glow if you were going for like a cyberpunk thing or uh, maybe a maybe a teal tint or something like that. So we should be set to go. So I will show you, this is a before, here is after. It's very subtle. Okay, so the last step of this, we want to publish all these different parameters. Now, whatever order you publish these in is how it's going to show up in Final Cut Pro. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you wanna be at the top of your stack, make sure you publish that first. So I actually like to publish the color first, but you can do whatever you like. So I'm gonna publish the color. We're gonna push this down arrow, go down to publish, and then we're gonna move on down to the intensity, and we'll publish that. After that, we're gonna jump down to the Gaussian blur. Once we get to the Luma here, unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, you cannot publish the Luma aspect here. Moving down though, if we get to the mix, we could publish this and so now you could have it so it mixes over the entire image. The last thing I wanna do is select our effect source, go to image, and we're going to actually clear the image. And this is important because if you don't do that, your file size is going to be, you know, a couple hundred megabytes with your video in there. But if you clear it out, it's going to only be a few megabytes. So it's much easier to, you know, email this file out or send it to other computers if it's a really small file size. After that, let's go ahead and push Command S to save it. And this will allow us to publish it and we can just call it. I'm gonna call it the Pro Mist filter and I'm gonna set the category to the Final Cut Brew and publish. Now I already have one made, we'll just replace that. This filter is now in Final Cut Pro. So let's jump into Final Cut. 
So now that we're in Final Cut, I'm just going to add a, an adjustment layer over these clips so you can see how it is applied. And we'll jump down to our filters. We'll look up Pro Mist. And now you can see how it is applied to these clips. So I can disable it, enable it, and you can see it happening there. And then if we jump into our effects here, we can set the color. We can drag the amount way up and we could set the mix down and we can get really crazy with this effect. So that about wraps up the tutorial. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button. Also, if you wanna see more videos just like this one, consider subscribing as I have brand new videos every single Wednesday. With that being said, I hope to see you next week.